Who's used a waffle iron? Did you did you get the waffle iron to be thematic with the movie? I'm a, nice. I'm a waffle iron pro. Okay, so when it says two thirds, that I fill two thirds of it. What does that mean? Like the surface area or like depth? Oh, I think it means like surface area because okay. when you push it down, it, it expands. Yeah, right. and it and then like you have to use some like you have to put like some kind of a nonstick sometimes down. I already treated the one. Right on, right on. <laughs> I, I downloaded the PDF <laughs> of the <laughs> Black and Decker one. <laughs> Matt, you turned the wire back on, right? I think so, yeah. Yeah, we did a test. Alright. <laughs> yeah, I used to be pretty into making waffles. Really? Is that why it appears in the movie, or was that the screenwriter? I think that's it. Novelist, I should uh, say. Um, that was... I think it was my idea. I can't remember. We really did, like, write every word together, so it's sometimes hard to recall whose idea. Is there a significance behind it being waffles and waffle arm? Mm -mm. Yeah. <laughs> How did the idea come about? What was the genesis of the idea of the phone? Uh, oh, uh, there was there's like a couple different points of entry. We had a um, I had a script about a girl that was working <laughs> for the summer in Ocean City, Maryland, and uh, it wasn't very good. It was okay. What is Ocean City, Maryland? What it's a it? resort town. Okay. In the eastern shore of Maryland. It's like the equivalent of Ocean City, New Jersey, or uh, any of the sort of East Coast um, beach towns where there's a boardwalk, an amusement park, big condominiums. Uh, so it's a peninsula between the Chesapeake Bay and the Atlantic. And a place that I grew up going to as a kid with my grandparents. So I had this scenario. Did you work there at all? Yeah, I did. A couple summers. I worked in a, um, a breakfast spot making omelets and waffles. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> the waffles. Yeah. But there were all these international students. Like, they'd get a summer work visa and would hang out for three months. First time in the U.S. in Ocean City, Maryland. I always thought that was kind of interesting, an interesting scenario. Uh, um, did you convey any of this when you were working on the character? Was it part of the background of the performance? Yeah, we talked about it, and the original was like, there was more of it on paper. There was like 15 yeah. pages in Ocean City with this character from Northern Ireland, Dara's character. What would that dynamic have been like? What was, what was it conveying? Mm, I don't know, what was it conveying? <laughs> what was what conveying? What were the 15 pages in the Ocean City about? Um, do 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 do. <laughs> they were about, it was a... Uh, well, this would be pretty different to see Taryn without, um, without Kim and Ned and Abby, where she sort of moves into, where she's more like watching them, mm. whereas in the Ocean City thing, you're sort of like seeing Taryn independent, um, which you know doesn't work out. She doesn't do it very well. She gets pregnant, <laughs> right? Um, <clears throat> we filmed the Ocean City stuff after um, the stuff in Baltimore, and um, it was really, really, really fun. We came back, right? We did Baltimore, and then we all went home for a couple weeks, and then mm -hmm. came back to do three days in Ocean City. And you don't actually end up seeing it. You see it in the special features, but Taryn works at an arcade, and uh, <laughs> Matt left me in the arcade for the <laughs> afternoon. To train. Um, everyone else went out to have fun, and you wanted me to, like, you know, actually look like I worked in the arcade. It's so, like, I can learn this in half an hour. Let me come back and join everyone else. But then it actually ended up being a dream because I had, as an employee, I had, like, a little, like, key that I had could just play any arcade game so instead of working i just so played every arcade game for like, and i've got so many tickets 
like a won so many tickets and I did deal or no deal and I won the grand prize of deal or no deal and so all of the tickets started oh. coming out and then I got prizes. crazy <laughs> prizes for all the crew. <laughs> like squirt guns and yeah. fake tattoos. Yeah, if we'd had more time, I would have tried to get you to work there for, you know, a few days. <laughs> <laughs> for better prizes, so you would get better prizes. Yeah. Is it important having that? knowledge of what happens because Matt's films tend to like begin in media res and they kind of end mm. before even bigger events even. Mm. Is it important to know that or, or to have that experience of what happens before the movie starts? Oh, um, that's an interesting question. Yeah, I mean we definitely, a big thing that we talked about was like what was Taryn's motivation for uh, leaving Northern Ireland for coming to the United States? And I think we were saying that it's like, it's not a logical thing. It's not like I'm going to come to the United States and I'm going to do this. It's like a very romantic notion. So the idea of a character like leaving, leaving the place they came for a place that they just like think might be better is obviously like a very, that shows a lot of idealism and romanticism in the character mm. that she's like, not searching, she's just basically searching for like something else. And, and I think that's definitely like she is, is super lost, <laughs> but you know, has like a, has like a desire to be around uh, Ned and Kim and Abby because they're like artistic. She's like, has artistic desires without like any real artistic aspirations. Yeah. It's kind of harsh. <laughs> I never thought about that actually. That was something you must have conceived of for the I character. I feel like that was very early yeah. when we were writing emails. About we were talking about that? Yeah. What about you, Hannah? Your, your character seems more dependent on context than actually maybe knowing the backstory. Yeah, I think so. I think what I was thinking about it just now is that really Abby and, and Bill are the only characters whose motives are clear and they're reactions are clear in the film with with definitely with Taryn and then even with Kim I think it's it's sort of harder to understand where they're coming from immediately or it's a more could be more ambiguous what led them to react in a certain way Taryn and Kim yeah it's not mm -hmm. it's not very clear but I think with mm. with Abby it's can see how she's got from point A to point B, you know? Yeah, that's a strong so line, kind of. There's a logic there. Yeah. A lot of the people writing about the film almost exclusively focus on, uh, on the, uh, the aunt and the uncle, as opposed to your performances, which I found odd. Like, mm -hmm. do you have any ideas why they're gravitating? Like, I know it's like a structuring thing, and those are the ones that you maybe get the closest to, but I mean, if they're not the protagonists necessarily. <laughs> no, I feel like there's no single protagonist. It's like a, it's a shared responsibility. It bounces from character to character. I mean, Taryn's set up as the protagonist, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but then isn't really. Mm -hmm. uh, and the world isn't seen through her eyes exclusively either. So mm -hmm. it's not like you're just a device to get to the Yeah, I think we've talked about Walmart. her once as like a vehicle with which like you start with her and you like go with her through the story mm -hmm. and then like and then she kind of becomes a part of their world mm -hmm. by the end of it yeah um, I'm not sure why I mean I feel like audiences respond frequently to Hannah and Dara's character characters and like I don't know come up to me and I'm sure to you too and articulate their response because um, I feel like your characters are really like, grounded and, and believable and relatable um, but maybe the the con the clear conflict is um, the dissolution of this marriage between these couples so maybe that's like in yeah. terms of like plot the thing to grab onto yeah I guess maybe they're the more. drama and we're mm -hmm. reacting yeah, mm -hmm. to it. Yeah, and you have your own dramas, but they're sort of yeah. aside, a little more muted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like using the word 
like going with a character or moving with a character because all of your films tend to seem to be about passage, especially this film, there's a lot of framings of passageways and mm -hmm. Hamilton in particular, there's a lot of movement through mm -hmm. space. Um, what was it like blocking this film? It seems like I saw Nick Pinkerton write something where he said that there was an actorly awareness of space or something like hmm. that. Uh, That's pretty nice. That's cool. mm -hmm. Yeah. I think, he, yeah, he was talking about it. Was it in a review of Blue Ruin? But mm -hmm. he was talking about how you mm -hmm. shoot space and mm -hmm. it used to be darker. Yeah. How, how what was the blocking like in the, in the film? Um, these look delicious, by the way. This is, yes. by the way, a test to make sure that I haven't screwed it up and, and then we'll all have okay. I also read that the first... I kind of like the idea of it being like four and us sharing each waffle. I think it's really yeah. sweet. Yeah. <laughs> well, the real thing is that I heard that the first waffle you make, kind of like the first yerba mate, is like not the best. Right. Like you kind of maybe even want to throw it out, but this looked decent. Like it looked like... Nina, you want to get in on this? Yeah, come on. No, I'm good. You sure? <laughs> it's like I'm the first good. pancake is never the best. Yeah. Yeah. But I is that is that so? Are we all going? Yeah. Should we do it? Okay, I haven't forgotten your I like question. It, I like eating it like pizza. <laughs> but I'll take a bite before before I answer. Mm. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Whatever doesn't get better than that. <laughs>